My name is Aaron Solomons. I'm an ADA instructor trainer. I teach ADA courses in freediving and I also train elite freedivers. The subject of today's little talk is going to be about equalization, specifically the Frenzel maneuver. Uh, most people who have difficulty on their first course, the uh, thing that stops them is poor understanding of equalization. Uh, it's been overcomplicated in the way it's been taught and we're going to try and simplify that for you today and teach you how to analyze what you're doing at the moment, then teach you how to do a frenzel dry, and then teach you the things that might change in the water that you have to watch so that it's just as effective in the water as you was on dry land for you. <coughs> First, let's talk a little bit about the, uh, the history of the frenzel, because it's interesting. During the Second World War, the German Air Force, the Luftwaffe, had a uh, fighter bomber called the Stuka that used to go down in a very sharp dive, vertically down, and was mainly used for taking out armor and artillery. Now, the difficulty about dive bombing straight down was that it put a terrific emphasis on being able to equalize your ears. So Frenzel was actually Dr. Frenzel from the Luftwaffe who invented a very convenient and quick technique of being able to equalize your ears. Uh, there was a Canadian diver by the name of Eric Fatah who uh, introduced this into free diving a number of years ago. And since then uh, it's become almost a standard for equalization. It's not the only form of equalization, maybe not even the best form of equalization, but it is the one we learn at first and it is effective. So here's the story about that. The first thing that we have to understand is uh, we have to understand a little bit of physiology. Allow me to click off this. Right, we don't need that. Uh, here we are. Now, the things we have to understand about the Frenzel are several points here. We have to close the nose, the nostrils, here. We have to close the lips. And we have to close what's called the epiglottis. The epiglottis is this little member here that decides whether something is going back into your lungs or down your gullet into your stomach. Now, at the top of the mouth here, the first thing that we have is what's called the hard palate. If you take your thumb and run it back, the top of your, the roof of your mouth is hard. If you run it further back, without actually vomiting, you come to a soft part. That's known as the soft palate. It is, in effect, a diaphragm. Behind this diaphragm, you have the entrance to the eustachian tubes, which are the passage by which we force air up into the middle ear here, and force, when the water comes into the outer ear, it forces the eardrum inwards. We force air up here into this and we force the eardrum back into its normal position. It works rather like this. Water comes into the outer ear, forces it in towards the middle ear. We force air up the eustachian tube and the eardrum returns to its normal position. Now, the thing that makes all this work is the tongue. Now, the active part of the tongue is, of course, only the part that comes in contact with the soft palate. In other words, the back of the tongue. Right here, this area of the tongue. Now, we're going to see that in real life in a minute and see what the action of the tongue has to be for this there's an awful lot of misconceptions 
uh, that have developed about how we actually manipulate the tongue. So we're going to deal with that in a second. But before we do that, let's understand what we do do and what we're doing at the moment. So what we're going to do now is we're going to teach you how to analyze what you are doing. The first thing is I ask somebody to equalize and I look at this area behind the nostrils, in that little pit behind the nostrils. I get them to equalize and we can see that popping out. The next area that I check is under the chin, between the Adam's apple and the point of the chin, all this area under here, you'll notice that it rises a little bit as I equalize. Now, don't swallow. If you swallow, you'll see the Adam's apple go down. This is a fault. Just simply, it should rise. Now, the other thing that we check is the diaphragm. We put the hand on the diaphragm here, and if there's any movement while you're equalizing, you're doing something called a valsalva. That means to say you're using your diaphragm to push air up towards your ears. This does not work in freediving. The reason it doesn't work is very simple, because we go down in a head down position. Therefore, when we're upside down, the diaphragm is higher than our ears. Let's say for the sake of argument that that's the bottom up there. If I equalize and I'm going down, I'm pushing air with my diaphragm up towards my ears. That's a distance of about 60 centimeters in the average male person. Uh, that's working against an enormous amount of water pressure. What the instructor will see and what the student will feel if he's doing this is that as he goes down, the equalizations become more and more difficult. He's requiring more and more force to equalize his ears. And not only is he requiring force, but he's having to take more and more time when he's using the correct technique, it's instantaneous and it's gentle. The friends will. I equalize five times then. It's quick and it's very gentle. You can control the amount of force used. If you force your ears, you'll find that at the end of the day, you can't equalize at all. This is the reason that most people, as I say, fail the first course. They don't get over the hurdle of equalization. Now, the critical part of the whole thing is this. Too much has been talked about controlling the soft palate and controlling the epiglottis. Truth of the matter is you can forget them. If the tongue action is right, the whole thing is going to work absolutely like a charm, provided the peripheral things, which we'll talk about later, yeah, are in place as well. So let's go over to the mirror and let's have a good look at the tongue action and see what can go right and what can go wrong. My voice is going to be funny because I'm wearing a nose clip. Uh, by the way, it's a Trigon's nose clip. Uh, I hope somebody from Trigon's is watching this because I expect at least three free nose clips for advertising you. Uh, it's an excellent nose clip made in Greece. Now, here's the thing. The action of the tongue is critically important, and the part of the tongue that is the most important, as we said, is the back of the tongue. Mm -hmm. Good. The movement is both quick and gentle. This is the key word. We don't use force in equalizing the ears. So again, let's deal with some faults. One of the faults yeah, is making the tongue pointed. Don't do that. Don't push the bottom teeth or the top teeth with the tongue. Like that. That is absolutely unnecessary. It's completely relaxed, lying in the bottom of the mouth. Mm -hmm. 
Now, the motion of the tongue is both up and back. And the best way to check it out is get your little light and do it in front of the mirror. Because then you can self-correct in this thing. If it's not working there, probably the action is too much up and not enough back. But with practice, anybody can get this movement. Once they've got it, they've got the frenzel. That's all you have to know about it. If you can equalize finally with your mouth open, you've got the frenzel. Now we're going to look at the factors that you really have to think about when you're in the water, the extra things. You've already done it in front of the mirror. You've practiced this and you have to probably practice it a lot until you get it right. There is a process of unlearning before you learn. So be patient with yourself. Don't expect results in the first 10 minutes. But if you persist with it, anybody who's motivated can do it with the tools that we've been given right now. Now let's look at what we have to think about, the additional factors that we have to think about when we're in the water. The most important thing that we have to think about is relaxation. If we're not relaxed, none of this is going to work. Relaxation is absolutely critical, particularly all the muscles of the face, the tongue, everything else. Your whole body has to be totally relaxed. Look for a nice sleepy feeling before you go down. Now, the next thing that we have to think about is when we equalize. The first equalization should be on the surface before you begin your descent. Now, I'm talking here mostly to beginners, so they will probably be having a breathing or doing their breathe up through a snorkel. And so let's go one, two, three, four. You're breathing, one, two, you take the last breath, big breath, <sighs> remove the snorkel from your mouth, very important, you can't equalize properly with a snorkel in your mouth. The next thing you do is you equalize your ears before you begin your descent, and then you do your duck dive, and before the tips of your fins have left the surface, you should equalize once again. This is very hard to coordinate. This is why all the difficulties come at the beginning of a course. Uh, because you have to coordinate and think about an awful lot of things at once. Now, if you've got the first two equalizations on time and correct, then you have, you've bought yourself a little bit of time to feel the pressure in the ears and feel that moment when it becomes, if you like it, ripe, and you can equalize again. The moment you feel, you don't wait for a lot of pressure. You just feel a slight increase in pressure. Okay, let's equalize again. Now, one of the critical things that you have to keep on checking yourself is, have I got air in my mouth? If I haven't got air in my mouth, this is not going to work. So I must have some air in my mouth. We are not talking about cheek fill here. We're not talking about doing this. We're talking about a normal amount of air in the mouth. And it's very easy to bring that air up again, particularly at the beginning. Now, the other things that can go wrong. We suggest at the beginning, every two seconds you equalize. Boom. 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 Keep up the rhythm of equalization. Never force an equalization. That's the next thing that's critically important. And the other things that are really important in this are your head position. Now, when we were very little, we were always told, hey, look where you're going. If you don't look where you're going, you're going to smack your head on the table. You're going to fall over the dog. You're going to step on the cat. All kinds of horrors are going to happen to you. So you go through the whole of your life looking where you're going. That is, if you want to stay reasonably in one piece. Now, the trouble with free diving is we mustn't look where we're going. Where we're going is down, right? That's the bottom for us today, because I'm not going to stand on my head and do this video. So, if I find myself 
with my head back, looking down the line, looking where I'm going, the equalization is not going to work. Now, there are several reasons why it won't work. First of all, it tends to open the epiglottis when I have my head back and the air rushes back into the lungs. The second thing is it causes enormous tension here on the baroreceptors that I have in the side of the neck in the area of the carotid plexus. So this is something we definitely do not want to do. Let me reiterate, we never, ever, ever go underwater with a snorkel in our mouth. Now there are other factors. So you usually find if somebody's putting their head back that they've got a huge hollow in the small of their back as well. This is more tension and usually their legs will be bent at the knee and they'll go down giving a very good imitation of Quasimodo having an epileptic fit. So please, yeah, relax, go down, looking straight at the line, straight ahead of you, not down at the bottom, yeah, and go down the line. Now we recommend until you've mastered your equalization that you go down what's called free immersion technique. That's say you pull yourself down the line and you pull yourself back up. The advantage of this is quite simple that if you can't equalize, if you miss an equalization, if you mistime it, all you have to do is stop right there and then you can turn around immediately and go back up and you stand a very good chance of not doing any damage to your ear at all. If on the other hand you're thinning down, you miss an equalization, it takes you a little bit of time to react and we can get into an area where we could squeeze our ears. In other words, cause a minor barotrauma to the eardrum. Uh, if you do that, all sorts of horrors can take place. Also, the eustachian tube can shut down and everything else. So, not recommended. Let's keep it to free immersion until we get this thing absolutely smooth and on the road. When you've done it, you'll find something else. It's like going through the glass, yeah? One minute, you're confused. You don't know what the hell you're doing. It's not working. You're doing everything wrong. The next minute, bang, you've got it. And it's so easy and you can be so relaxed and that's where the fun comes in free diving. And that's where you really begin to enjoy yourself. Now, other things that we need to uh, keep a little, uh, a little bit of um, attention on are uh, if your mask strap is too tight, what's going to happen is that you will probably find it difficult to equalize your mask. If you get a negative pressure in the mask, it's going to suck up the soft palate. So make sure that when the mask is on the face, you can gently pull it away from the face. In other words, a minimum pressure on the mask in order that the mask should seal underwater. If you need a lot of pressure, I'm sorry, it's the wrong mask for you. Go and get yourself another one. Of course, when looking at a mask, we have to consider the fact that we must have good access to the nose. If we can't pinch the nose, then we're in trouble at the beginning in doing a frenzel. Of course, if you're an advanced diver and you're using a nose clip, no mask, no goggles, uh, it's a completely different story. The last precaution that we have to take is to remember never ever equalize on ascent. In other words, after you've turned round to come up, take your hand away from your nose. Do not touch your nose again till you're on the surface. That's very important because if we equalize on the ascent, we can squeeze our ears, we can get a reverse ear block and all hell breaks loose and uh, then that will be the end of diving for quite some time, depending how severe your, you've managed to traumatize your eardrum. Okay, so that's more or less all our information for the moment on the Frenzel. Uh, we wish you very good luck at practicing this, and I'd really like to just go over the main points. We, what we've learned today, we've learned how to analyze what we're doing at the moment, with all the checks, to check here, to check under the chin, to check whether we're moving our diaphragm, and to check that we can equalize our ears with our mouth wide open. 
when we've passed all those hurdles, then we're, we know we're doing a correct frenzel. The next thing that we learned after that, after learning how to do a correct frenzel, was how we brought all this into the water and the points that we had to remember while we were in the water, and there are a lot of them. I'm going to go very briefly over them again. The most important thing is to be relaxed. The next thing, in sequence, <coughs> is that we must equalize our ears before we leave the surface, and the second equalization should come before our fin tips have left the surface, or before our feet have left the surface. Thereafter, each equalization should come when you feel the pressure building. Don't wait for big pressure and certainly not for pain. Don't try to economize on equalizations. Keep the rhythm going. Check that you have correct amount of air, that you have a little bit of air in your mouth, otherwise the equalization won't work. And the next thing is head position. Don't look down the line. You'll find yourself hollowing your back There'll be tension here, there'll be tension in the spinal column, and there'll be tension even in the legs if you do that. So please keep the head in a natural position and go down the line. We also suggested that until you've got the equalization absolutely perfect, that you use the free immersion technique of pulling yourself down the line and pulling yourself back up. It's a much more controllable uh, method of going forward and learning the equalization and we can stop at any time turn around if it's not working if it's not working don't dwell on it don't start doing maneuvers with your head or your jaw or anything else just turn around come back up and have a little think about what went wrong there don't just do another one without trying to analyze yeah what happened on that one the last thing that you have to do is all concerned with equipment. Never go down with a snorkel in your mouth. Do check your mouth strap before you go down before it's the, the, to make sure that it's not too tight. And the last thing is never try to equalize your ears while you're going up. So here's wishing you a lot of luck from free divers. Uh, let us know if you enjoyed this video. Let us know if it helped you. So goodbye from free divers.